Has your face been used in an uh, online scan? Oh, yeah. Do you know, I was watching you early talking about mm -hmm. that. Absolutely. Only yesterday, because I'm not on Facebook, and only yesterday somebody said on Facebook that there was some ridiculous sort of losing weight nonsense yes. that they'd put my face on. And it's infuriating, yes. isn't it? It's infuriating. So please, please, please do not fall for the scammers. No. Please. You do not endorse weight loss products. No, no. absolutely not. OK, uh, Lorraine, <laughs> Thank thanks very much indeed. Yeah, mine is uh, keto pills. I get people I would imagine would have been able to see through the scam contacting me saying, I'm desperate to lose weight. Do your keto pills work? I, I do not endorse, sell, make, manufacture or back any pills for losing weight. A security guard at a place I went to regularly once came in touch with me and said, I'm putting money into your cryptocurrency oh, scheme. And I said, no, 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 it's not a crypto... It's not mine, it's oh, a scam dear. advert. He said, no, it isn't, it's you. I said, no, it, it, it's a scam advert. I promise you, I don't talk about cryptocurrency. No. They're not me, those adverts. And he said, no, it's you. And he got the advert. He showed me the advert and he said, look, it's you. And I said, but it's fake. He said, no, it's not. And it, he had been so brainwashed that even though it's me who was in the advert and me saying it was a scam, he didn't believe me. These people are very clever and vicious. We have... Uh, the, the Lindy Cameron, yeah. Executive of the National Cybersecurity Centre, Lindy Cameron, with us now. And your face has been used, Lindy Cameron, hasn't it? That's right. So like you, basically, people have imitated me in an attempt to scam people. And actually, one of the things we're talking about at the conference today is the fact that some of the future technologies might make that even easier. So large language models, ChatGPT, as some of your colleagues will have heard about, um, actually means that it's easier to write you know, beautifully crafted emails or English, for example, that mean that you can't spot those spelling mistakes or tells that might have helped you spot a scam in the past. So they're really plausible. It's incredibly important, therefore, that people not, push emails to us. It's not just written either, because we're hearing in the charts they're banding, banging, banning AI versions of singers who aren't the real singers. So in future, I may be doing a scam advert where you can see and hear me that's been done by AI. This is dangerous, and I know you're not police, but we ha do you not think we have a fundamental problem in this country that we do not prosecute scammers? We don't prosecute them, we don't investigate them, people report them, people get in touch with me and say, I've reported it. Nothing happens in the mm. social media companies, and we do not have... The police are not funded to investigate. Surely it doesn't matter what you say unless we're going to start prosecuting people. So it's really important that we recognise the harm that is done to victims with these kinds of scams. I mean, these are thousands of scams that affect individuals and collectively it has a very significant economic, economic impact. So it is really important that we take this seriously. But actually, there are things that people can do to help. So at the moment, only about I think a third of phishing emails are reported to us. We want people to help us by reporting phishing emails, for example, to report at phishing.gov.uk, report you know, text message scams to 7726. By telling us what's happening, it's easier for us to spot the things that are happening at scale and then go after some of those bigger sources of that crime. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, and, and you know that I support that and I've told people to do all those things and I've worked with you on this, but I go back to the point. If we do not prosecute the scammers when they steal people's money, if we do not take the money back, if we do not have criminal sanctions, then there is little you can do. We need a fundamental change in policing in this country, don't we, to look at fraud and scams? So our law enforcement response to that is part of it, but it's equally important that we try and make the technology safe and resilient. So part of what we're talking about today are the kind of future technologies that we need to build security into from the get-go. It's too easy at the moment for people to, to take advantage of known vulnerabilities, to use easy ways in to try and run these kind of scams. And so it's important we think about how to try and make technology secure by design, as we, just, as we say. So trying to make sure that it's actually safe for people to use. We shouldn't expect people to have to be experts in technology to protect themselves and their families. We want to make sure the technologies are set up so that the default is safe. And then if you want to, you can turn on the extra features. The, the, the impact of scams is visceral. Uh, it affects people's financial, physical and mental health. Yeah. Uh, I got in, uh, STV uh, uh, got in touch with me last night uh, about that. I'd spoken to a woman called Jennifer right. who saw a scam ad which had been used with my face and name on it and she got drawn in and she lost £150,000 and her life is devastated. Here's a oh clip from God. that. As of the 3rd of January, that's when they coerced me, for want of a better word, into taking out loans to the value of £20,000 a day. I've never been in debt in my life. I've never taken out a loan in my life. I've never 
had a credit card bill. I can't actually quite believe what's happened to me. Um, it's horrific, <laughs> absolutely horrific. Oh, Jennifer, a hundred and fifty grand. That's and and the problem for me is these people have perverted oh, my, my reputation to steal that money. No, I don't. I, and can she get that money? I mean, how does she? Presumably, uh, the bank will take well, a view on not, that, which has got to be compassionate, no? It is not necessarily sure that she will get the money back. And, and to, give, to be fair to the banks, if they've done all their checks right, why are they the ones who have to pay up? And that is the problem. I mean, I have a big issue with social media companies not being the ones who pay up in these circumstances when they're the ones who promote the adverts with my face and name in, even though I've reported it on many times. I, I have to be careful what I say here, right? But sometimes I read political runes, yeah. OK? Uh, because of meetings I have. Mm. I think we are going to see a fundamental shift in the prioritisation of fraud strategy coming from the government right. over the next few months. I am hoping that they deliver a fundamental shift. Yeah. Lindsay Cameron, I think, uh, I mean, that's encouraging, but you've already addressed two things. One is there doesn't seem to be enough police power in, in going after these people, but your response seems to be, let's try and cut it off at the source. So let's just take one example. An email with a link in it, most people know, don't click on a link. You can't forgive people who do click on it because frankly, you know, someone's email mailbox may have been hacked and therefore you think, for instance, you're getting a email from your son. And he says, I need, you know, can you help me out? Just click on this link. And how can we build resilience into a system to make sure that those emails aren't sent out, those links aren't dodgy, and people get money that way? That's right. So, so first of all, what we can help people do is recognise when that's happening and spot it. So, so you talked about the emotional impact this has on people. And one of the things we say is, if you feel that emotional pressure, then pause and think. Am I confident that's real? Have I checked it? But what we're also doing in the National Cyber Security Centre is thinking about how we do try and recognise that, recognise that at scale. So part of why we ask people to forward us those phishing emails is because then we can automatically take down sites that are hosting that kind of activity or block that. And, and in particular, for the public sector, what we're able to do, for example, is block people collect, connecting to known malicious domains. We're thinking about ways we can work with the tech companies to try and stop this at scale. It is a huge challenge. Well, the, the, many of those tech companies are, of course, being paid by scammers to do scam adverts. I mean, it is worth remembering that. I, I'm just going to change the subject very briefly because you're also talking about the risk posed by China and Russia mm. with hacking to our infrastructure. How worried should we be as individuals and, uh, and as a nation about the potential for those type of uh, inter-country hacking and, and cyber warfare, effectively? So Oliver Doyden, the Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster, is talking today about the kind of state-aligned groups we've seen in Russia who we are concerned pose an increased threat to our critical national infrastructure. That means most people in the country don't need to worry about that. It's quite targeted at people who run our energy companies, our telecoms companies, our financial sector, and we're asking them to be more vigilant to this kind of state-aligned activity. So hacktivists are sympathetic to Russia's position and who want to use that power to, to do damage to the UK. But it it's be... really important for all of our citizens that actually that, that our CNI companies do that. It, but it can be as, as granular as attacking the, the, the phone companies who supply GP surgeries so that people can't get it through to their doctors. I mean, these are that, that's the type of real-world examples that are happening, isn't it? So that's the kind of thing. Mostly we've seen that coming from cyber criminals. So most of those instances are actually cyber criminals who are using ransomware. They're holding to ransom organisations who are then not able to provide services or support their customers and asking them to pay money to effectively get services turned back on. We don't recommend that, by the way. That's, again, not something most individuals should worry about. That's mostly organisations that need to think about what they do with their data and how they protect their key services and get them back up and running again as quickly as possible to make sure customers and small businesses aren't impacted. We've actually issued some really great advice recently for small businesses and sole traders, and we've told them to help check their own cybersecurity and got a couple of tools on our website to help them do that, to make sure that small businesses who don't have IT experts or sole traders are working by themselves, that they've got a way to understand where they might be vulnerable to some of those issues. All right, Lindsay Cameron, thank, thank you very you. much indeed. Thank you. Do you know what? I, isn't it? I, it is, and I just feel if you look at the rise of AI, particularly Chat GPT, it was only launched a couple of months ago, and now students are using it to write their essays, 
and... My wife used it to make a programme on Radio 4. That's yeah. right, she did. So, yeah. And uh, people can uh, use it to write legal letters and they're getting results with that. The Chancellor used it to write some of his speech. We know it's not just words. As you say, AI can, right now, create a convincing Martin Lewis who can actually do a TV type ad. In some ways it'd be nice, but, but not in all ways. And, and well, the, not the, if it's going to scam people. No, and look, and I am at the moment, I'll, I'll be honest, Susanna, I sued Facebook a number of years ago. Yeah. The number of scams I'm seeing with me in on Facebook again is rising at an exponential rate. We can't let them outrun I, I, us. I have had, I have had conversations that I, I, I don't know if I've got the energy to sue again, but uh, we are getting close. But, but ultimately, you know the thing that puts me off doing it? Mm. Why is it my responsibility no, to police? Okay. Why have we got, not got a government that mm -hmm. is acting on, on properly protecting people from fraud? Why, when I tell people to report it to Action Fraud and elsewhere, mm -hmm. do they report it, which is right, but then nothing is done about it? So there's a little bit of reticence of whether I need to go... I want to go through all of that again, yeah. because, actually, we need the online safety bill to stop scams, yeah. and we need proper policing and police to be resourced to, to, to police fraud. It is not a victimless crime. It destroys yeah. lives. Look at Jennifer and her lost 150 grand.